Welcome back. I wasn't actually talking to you, baby. Um, all right, we're going to start off as we always do, laying down on our backs. So you can start with your knees bent and allow the heaviness of the bones to settle ah! and connect you to the earth. Then if it's comfortable for you to extend the heels away from the crown of the head, you can do that. If that causes any discomfort in the lower back, just keep the knees bent, take the feet a little bit wide and let the knees fall in towards each other. So the legs can relax, but the low back is supported. And we'll take a moment to just check in with ourselves before we really get moving. Bring the awareness to the breath. And notice the quality of your breath today. Notice if your chest feels tight or open. If the breath is short or long. If the inhale or the exhale bears more weight. And then begin to bring your awareness to the diaphragm that muscle directly below the rib cage that expands down expands downward as you inhale and with each inhale trace the diaphragm's expansion downward and with each exhale <sighs> allow the body to spread wide across the floor. So again, as you're inhaling, following the diaphragm and stretching the breath down into the bottoms of the feet and the tips of the toes. And as you exhale, <sighs> allowing the body to spread wide across the floor. Have three more deep, long breaths like that. Noticing the effect of that deep belly breath on the energy of the body, on the heart rate and the speed of the thoughts through the mind. And then we'll begin that quick scan through our physical bodies, starting at the bottoms of the feet and the tips of the toes. As you inhale, draw your awareness up through your legs, into the pelvis, the hips, the low back. Notice any areas of tension, soreness, general discomfort. And as you inhale deeply, breathe into those places. Gently open and expand with your inhale. And as you exhale completely, <sighs> allow some of that tension to leave the body with the breath. The next inhale draws the awareness up the torso into the shoulders, the neck, and the face. Again, just noticing where you're holding tension in the upper body today. And as you inhale, bring your intention, awareness, that opening and expansion that creates space for fresh blood flow and energy. And as you exhale, <sighs> begin that conversation of consciously asking the body to soften, release, and let go. Lastly, bring the awareness into the mind and notice where your thoughts are at. 
Notice the speed at which they're moving through you. Allow yourself to step back from identifying as your thoughts and begin to witness their passing without getting attached or carried away, without judging yourself for what you're thinking about, but just beginning to notice the habits and patterns in the way the mind turns. And then with an inhale, never mind that. Okay. So we start off laying on our backs because the optimal blueprint for alignment in all of our bodies exists with the bones and joints stacking through the back body plane. So we lay down on our backs to get started to feel what this stacking of the bones and joints feels like and to lock it into our muscle memory so that when we are returning in other poses, when we come to other poses, we are using our awareness to return our bodies to this stacking of the bones and joints through the back body plane. We're gonna start off today with some core exercises on the floor. So, you're gonna reach your arms up and overhead and extend the legs up towards the ceiling. Drawing the abdomen towards the spine without completely collapsing the lower back towards the floor. So there's a little arch in the lower back, but the abdomen, the abdominal muscles cling towards the back body. And as you scoop, from your tailbone towards your heels and pull the belly button into the spine. You're trying to lift the feet up and overhead. And you may not get there today. As you exhale, you're rolling the spine back out, the vertebrae by vertebrae. Trying to feel the articulation of each vertebrae as you move slowly. If the legs aren't coming overhead right away, just try, just engage the abdomen and do that work and lift. And then lower the legs down towards the mat. Again, the abdomen pulling in towards the spine, maintaining a lift in the lower back as you work. The heels come all the way down towards the mat. And then pulling the belly button into the spine again, we lift up. If you're pregnant, this is not actually something you should be doing, so you can does lay in a restorative position with the heart above the, with the head above the heart and relax for a minute doing some breathing while we do this part. So rolling the spine out again, vertebrae by vertebrae, coming to lay flat on the back and then scooping from the tailbone towards the heels, pulling the abdomen in towards the spine to lift the legs slowly, slowly, slowly all the way up and overhead and maybe you need to get a little momentum and maybe you're not quite there yet and that's okay. Finding the edge of the shape and working, feeling your muscles working wherever you're at and then rolling the spine back out, vertebrae by vertebrae. Noticing if there's a place where the vertebrae gets stuck and want to move in chunks or if there's a tendency for the body to shimmy to one side. All of this gives us information about where the body is strong and where the body is weak. Sitting back up, after the heels come towards the floor, we're gonna do a total of three of these. Although doing five to 10 is ideal if you decide to practice on your own. So when the spine moves in chunks, it lets us know that that's where our paraspinal muscles are weak. And when we shimmy to one side, that lets us know that that side is weak, that the other side is overworking, and that we need to use our awareness to cultivate a balance in the way the body works. Otherwise, all of our practices are just gonna exacerbate our imbalances. 
So the more slowly we can go, the more information we can gather about what's happening in our body. And that's really what this practice is all about. Oh, why is it always hard? Good. Once you've gone through the cycle three times, you can draw the knees into the chest. When you're doing these spinal rolls, notice if the abdominal muscles pop up in the middle and exhale and soften them back in wide. <sighs> Good. The knees drawn into the chest, you can rock gently from side to side to massage the lower back. We're going to do one more little core thing here on the floor. And so the first action of the abdomen is always to draw in and up. We're pulling the actual abdominals back so the vertebrae of the spine stack. When the vertebrae are stacked and lengthened, then it's safe to add other things like twists. So we're gonna draw the knees into the chest and take the arms wide or in like cactus or goal post. And as you inhale, you're pulling the knees in. As you exhale, you're taking them up and over towards the right elbow, turning the abdomen back to the left to keep the left shoulder grounded. Hovering the knees above the floor, not letting them drop down. And then inhale, bring it back to center. And with an exhale, take the knees up and over towards the left elbow, turning the abdomen back to the right to keep that right shoulder grounded. Don't let the knees touch the floor. Inhale it back to center. Let's do four more times to each side. And if it starts to feel easy, you can start to straighten your legs and work from the ankles to the wrist, turning the abdomen in the opposite direction to keep that balance and evenness in the grounding of the shoulders. Even when we're working with our knees bent, we literally want the knee to touch the elbow and that last little lift is where you really get that strength in the obliques. Good. Once you've done five times, in each direction. Then you can again draw the knees into the chest and gently rock from side to side to massage the low back. Good. So then grab your strap. Remember, it could be a belt or a scarf or a dog leash. Anything that just helps you reach your foot with your hands when you're laying on your back. So extending the right leg up, extend the left leg straight out from the hip socket, both feet flexed and active, press out through both heels and then the balls of both feet, root both thigh bones down, left thigh bone towards the floor, right thigh bone away from the crown of the head, lengthening the lower back evenly, and then draw the leg more actively towards yourself. Have three more deep, long breaths. Inhale, breathing the diaphragm down towards the heels. And exhale, softening the abdomen back, spreading it wide across the back body and spine. Good. And then we'll take that strap into the right hand, press the whole left side body down, and with an exhale, begin to open that right leg out to the right side. You want the leg to open at about a 90 degree angle. Continue pressing through the left thigh bone, pressing out through both heels, and rooting the right thigh bone away from the crown of the head so you're not crunching the lower back on that right side. And then we're gonna do the same thing we just did, pulling the abdomen back towards the spine and rotating it back towards the left side to ground the back of the ribs, the kidneys evenly, using our awareness to cultivate balance and evenness in the grounding in the stacking of the bones and joints through the back body plane in all the poses. And this is also the same shape as triangle pose. 
So remembering the alignment and returning to it. Have one more big breath. And inhale that leg back up to center. Take the strap into the left hand. Keep pressing through both heels and the balls of both feet as you begin to take that right foot across to the left side body. Again, trying to keep the heel at the height of the hip as you press the left thigh bone down and you root the outer right hip down so that right hip doesn't creep up towards the right shoulder and crunch the right side body. Now as you exhale here, draw the abdomen back and turn it to the right, keeping as much balance and evenness in the grounding of the back body as you can in all the shapes. Have three more deep long breaths. Good. And then with an inhale, bring that leg back up to center. We're going to take one side of the strap in each hand, press out through both heels, and with an inhale, lift the nose to the knee. Keep rooting that thigh bone down. Have three deep, long breaths. Inhale. Exhale, one. Keep pressing the left thigh bone and heel. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three, release the chest, release the foot to the mat. Shimmy out the hips a little bit. And have a big breath. <sighs> Pause to just observe the different sensations and the different sides of your body in this moment. And then we move to always cultivate and bring more balance. Bringing that left foot up, placing the strap around the ball of the left foot or the upper arch. Press out through both heels. Press the whole midline of the right leg firmly towards the floor and root the left thigh bone away from the crown of the head. Keep that balance and evenness in the grounding of the sacrum as you then draw that left leg more actively towards yourself. Have three more deep, long breaths. Breathing into those places in the body that are tight and sore and stuck. And as you exhale, <sighs> continuing that conversation about softening, releasing, and letting go. Take the strap into the left hand. Press the whole right side body firmly down as you open that left leg out to the left side. You wanna open the leg out at about a 90 degree angle. Continuing to press the right thigh bone down, press out through both heels and root the left thigh bone away from the crown of the head. Draw the abdomen towards the spine and turn it back to the right. So there's balance and evenness in the grounding of the back of the ribs and the kidneys. Have three more deep, long breaths. <sighs> and inhale your leg back to center. Root both thigh bones down. Take the strap into the right hand and take that left leg across to the right side body. Continuing to press both thigh bones down, especially that outer left hip down towards the right heel. So both side bodies and sides of the lower back are evenly long. As you inhale, pull the abdomen towards the spine and rotate it back to the left. Have three more deep long breaths. Aliens back. Okay. Yeah. And then with an inhale, bring it back to center. Release your foot from the strap. Lower the leg to the mat. Yeah. 
Roll, draw the knees into the chest. Roll gently from side to side. Roll to the right side. Press down with the palms to lift up and come to a comfortable seated position. Keep the eyes closed for another moment and bring your awareness to the foundation. If you are, feel that your pelvis is tilted back and it's hard to sit up, sit up on a pillow or a blanket or a block because it's nearly impossible to lift the spine when the pelvis is tilted back. You gotta get the pelvis in a neutral position. So both sits bones can ground down and we can inhale and lift the abdomen towards the spine to stack the bones and joints. Lift the crown of the head and the tips of the ears. And as you exhale, soften the shoulders together and down the back. Looking for that lightness that comes when the bones and joints stack in the back body plane, when we are in alignment and we're not fighting gravity in any way. So the core is the site of the third chakra. They say it's where the will and the ego reside. In yoga, it's considered the seat of personal power. And the whole front body is considered the individual body or the ego body. The back body is considered the universal body or the soul body. So this action of drawing the abdomen in and up is an action of reining the ego in to work for your higher self or to work for the collective good of all beings. So it's not that the ego is bad and wrong and that we want to dissolve it because it's actually an important aspect of ourself that helps us to make choices and decisions to navigate the physical world and to have boundaries that protect ourselves and um, make our relationships with others healthy. So it's not that we wanna get rid of the ego, it's just that we wanna learn how to use it, to, to remind it that it's not running the whole show, but that it's actually just a tool that can align us with our larger passions, purposes, and goals to contribute to being the change we want to see and creating the kind of relationships, communities, and reality that we want to be a part of. Okay, blah, 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 I'm done. Um, we'll take a moment to connect a little more deeply to our breath. We'll do ujjayi breath. I can't remember if we've done it in this series or not, but um, ujjayi breath is inhaling and exhaling through the nose while tightening up the back of the throat like you're fogging up a mirror. And in yoga, for the most part, we wanna breathe in and out through the nose. Unless like we just really need to let something go and then we'll give it a big sigh. And you'll know when you need to do that because it facilitates release and it feels really good. For this exercise though, we're gonna just inhale, lift and lengthen through the crown of the head and exhale through the nose, softening the shoulders together and down the back. Tighten through the throat and inhale deeply and exhale completely through the nose. Keeping the back of the throat tight. We'll do that a few more times. Inhale deeply. Keeping the back of the throat tight. And exhale completely. Continue at your own pace. Making sure that the breath becomes gently audible. The sound is like waves crashing on the shore. And it gives the mind something to soothe it and focus on. So you can continue this pranayama, this breath work, ujjayi breath, throughout the practice today. With an inhale, you can gently open your eyes and come onto your hands and knees. And I realized that I forgot to feed the dogs before I started this video, and that's why Bailey is right here on top of me. Um, 
So spreading the fingers wide, grounding them under the shoulders, ground the knees right under the hips, and draw the abdomen back. Keep a gentle engagement in the spine, even as you arch the back, gazing up, tilting the tailbone up. And as you exhale, press down and curl the back of the heart to the ceiling. Continue this at your own pace. Sink the motions of the body with the breath. Use the breath to deepen the motions of the body. Move in any way that feels good to you within the confines of these shapes. Allowing the mind to connect to and receive the wisdom of the body. All right. And with your next exhale, tuck your toes and lift your hips high. Press back to downward facing dog. Making sure the feet are facing forward as wide as the hips. Lift and spread the fingers and toes. Stretch them out and ground them down. With your next inhale, lift the abdomen towards the spine and lift the hips high. Make that V shape with your body. As you exhale, press the thigh bones to the back of the room. Let the heels hang heavy. And get, we want to work to get the heels down, but we don't want to compromise the shape of the back to get the heels down. So if you press your heels down and your low back curls in, then stop. Inhale, lift the hips and lift the heels. And then exhale, press the thigh bones back. So we're using the arms and legs to create space in the spine. If the hips are really tight, you can bend the knees right over the ankles and work on just lifting the hips with the knees bent. Still, the abdomen draws towards the spine. Have one more big breath, feeling that pulsation of drawing in and up as you inhale and pressing out through the four corners of the hands, the feet, the crown of the head as you exhale. Good. Inhale, fold forward into plank. And we're going to hold here for a moment. You can feel free to lower the knees down to work the alignment in plank, but you want to lower them behind the hips so you still have to work. The tailbone roots down towards the heels and the abdomen draws towards the spine. The back of the heart lifts towards the shoulder blades, extend through the crown of the head and the heels if the knees are lifted. Have one more big inhale. And as you exhale, lower the knees, chest and chin. Pause with your booty lifted up and root your tailbone down. Feel the engagement in the low abdomen and maintain that as you inhale, come forward into a low cobra. So you might not lift the back as much when you engage the lower abdomen, but you're protecting the hypermobile part of the lower spine. Everything that's on the ground presses down to inhale, lift the heart and the crown more. As you exhale, roll the shoulders together down and into the spine. Have one more big breath. And then exhale, seat to heels come into child's pose. Allowing the weight of the hips to settle towards the heels. So they might not touch, but energetically they're grounding down in that direction so that you can inhale, and breathe length and space into the spine. Walk the fingertips forward. Exhale here. <sighs> Soften more deeply into the support of the ground beneath you. With your next inhale, lift your abdomen and walk your fingers to the right. So you're lifting the abdomen and then you're relaxing it and placing it down on that right thigh. Stretch the fingertips away from the pelvic bowl. And have a few more deep long breaths. Good, with an inhale, bring it back to center. And exhale, pause here. Inhale, lift the abdomen and walk the fingers over to the left side. Exhale, lower the abdomen onto the left thigh. 
Keep both sides of the pelvis evenly grounded as you walk the fingertips away from the pelvic bowl. Allowing the abdomen to soften and the organs to be massaged by that thigh bone. Have a few more deep bone breaths. And then with an inhale, take it to center. And exhale here. Inhale, rise, hands and knees. Exhale, press it back, downward dog. Inhale, lift and spread the fingers and toes. Lift the abdomen and lift the hips high. Exhale, the thigh bones back. Grounding the heels as much as you can without curving in the lower spine. Have three more deep long breaths. Lifting the low ribs towards the thigh bones. Taking the center of the shoulder blades towards the thigh bones. <sighs> With your next inhale, begin to tip the toe, the feet forward to meet the hands. Come into a standing forward bend. Feel free to bend the knees if the hands are far from the floor. Let the head be heavy. Shake it out, yes and no. Grab opposite elbows and sway. Move in any way that feels good to you to release the tension from the back, the shoulders and the neck. With an inhale, return to center and exhale. <sighs> Through the mouth with sound. Your next inhale, begin to roll the spine up. Spinning the pelvis around the femur. Keeping a slight bend in the knees as you stack vertebrae upon vertebrae. Allowing the shoulders and then the head to be the last thing to rise. Good. So in order to lift and lengthen through the spine, we have to get strong and aligned through the legs. If you have blocks, um, they're awesome. If you don't have them, you should get some. You can take a block between your thighs, but you can do this without the block between the thighs. Start with the feet as wide as your hips. Lift and spread your toes. Feel the muscles of the front of the legs engage. Feel the arch of the foot lift. Keep that lift as you lower the toes down. Take your thigh bones back so your hips stack over your knees and ankles. And then draw the center of the buttocks into the midline to root the thigh bones, to root the tailbone down. From that grounding in the legs, inhale and lift the abdomen. Lift the frontal hip bones towards the spine and lift the arms up. Grab the left wrist with the right hand and exhale over to the right side. Good. Feel how the more you press down from the hips through the four corners of the feet, the more you can lift the abdomen and lengthen the side body. So we're not here. We're here. With your next inhale, come back to center. Grab the right wrist with the left hand. With an exhale, lean up and over towards the left side. Notice how that right leg wants to pop up and don't let it. From the hips, press through the four corners of the feet and use that leverage to lift and lengthen the side bodies. Notice if you have the tendency to let your hips come forward and draw them back. Have one more big breath and inhale back to center. Exhale, fold forward. If you have the block, take the block in between the legs. You might want your blocks or your cans or whatever you're using under your arms if the floor is far away. So if we're like this, the body thinks it's falling. If we support ourselves, it can actually release. Inhale, gaze forward, and exhale, step the left leg back. So you're coming into this low lunge on the right side. All of the things we've been building up week by week, you want to engage the legs. Inhale, pulling them energetically towards each other to square the hips. The tailbone roots down, we press out through the back heel, and then we can inhale and lengthen 
the heart and the crown of the head forward. You're welcome to stay here with your hands on the ground or blocks. For today to play with stretching through the fingertips and creating one line of energy through the body. So the abdomen is like almost on the thigh, but then it draws back. The bones and joints stack in the back body plane. Have three breaths. And then with that third exhale, release. Inhale, step the back foot forward. Exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, gaze forward, lengthen. Exhale, step the right leg back this time. Again, activating the legs. We're pulling the legs energetically towards each other, which tends to lift the back thigh bone and draw it forward as you pull the left thigh bone back. Press out through the back heel. Inhale, lengthen, lift the abdomen and lengthen the crown of the head forward. If you did so on the other side, lift the arms up. Three deep long breaths. And exhale, release. Inhale, step the back foot forward. And exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, reach the arms up and overhead, come to stand. And exhale, release the arms down by your sides. Notice how you're standing. So every time we return to this pose, to dasana, mountain pose, we want to check in with our alignment. We usually all have like one foot forward and one foot turned out and one knee bent and one hip out. And this is where our chronic pain comes from. So we want to start to become aware of how we're standing and how we're holding our bodies. So back at the top of the mat, finding that alignment, that stacking of the bones and joints. If you have your block, take it between your thighs because it helps. Lift and spread the thigh bones. Um, lift and spread the toes. Take the thigh bones back. Lower the toes, root the tailbone down. So you want the weight evenly in the heels and toes. As you inhale, reach the arms up. We're going to add a twist. And we want to keep the pelvis facing forward as we turn the torso and let the twist come from the core. So we're going to widen the left inner thigh to the left gently as we turn the torso to the right to keep the hips facing forward. Continue to press from the pelvis through the four corners of the feet. Notice where the weight is going if the hips are going forward, right? That's not good for your spine. Press down through the heels, inhale, lift up, and exhale, turn. Inhale, back to center. Feel and find the center. Begin to notice what your tendencies are and to make adjustments. And then we're gonna be widening that left, right inner thigh, excuse me, to the right to stabilize the pelvis as we turn the abdomen to the left. So hips stay facing forward, lifting straight up, and then turning right around the central axis of yourself. Have three breaths. Good, and with an inhale, bring it back to center. And exhale, fold forward over your legs. As you inhale, gaze forward, lengthen, the abdomen lifts. As you exhale, keep the front of the bones lifting as you fold. A couple more times like that, feeling that pulsation. Inhale, gaze forward, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold forward without just collapsing into the thighs, right? Three more times. And then with an exhale, step that left leg back. Again, we're in that low lunge on the right side. All things the same, hugging the legs together, lifting the abdomen. And we're going to add those two things together 
So widening the left inner thigh to the left to stabilize the pelvis. As you inhale and lift the right arm up for a twist, always an option to lower the back knee down for some stability and support. Either way, as you inhale, you're pulling from the periphery of the body into the core, lifting the abdomen. And as you exhale, you're extending out in all directions. Good. A few more deep, long breaths. <sighs> and release. With an inhale, step the back foot forward. Exhale, fold deep knee. Inhale, gaze forward. Lengthen your spine. Exhale, right leg back. Low lunge on the left side. Same actions of hugging the legs together, then pressing out through the crown of the head and the back heel. Lifting the back thigh bone and widening that inner right thigh to the right. As you inhale, lifting the abdomen towards the spine and lifting the left arm up for a twist. As you exhale, press out in all directions. Have three more deep, long breaths. Feeling that pulsation of drawing everything into the center and then extending it all back out. And with your next exhale, release. Inhale, step the back foot forward. Exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, reach the arms up and overhead, come to stand. Exhale, release the arms down by your sides. Good. We're going to do chair pose now. And you can do chair pose with your feet together or your feet apart. What you don't want to do is this. We don't want to have the feet wide and the knees going in because that's going to strain your inner knees. And I literally see it all the time. So look at your feet. Make sure they're facing forward. As you inhale, lift your arms up. As you exhale, stick the thigh bones back. Stick the booty out to get low. See that the knees are in line with your ankles. And then root the tailbone down, hugging the center of the buttocks into the midline to lift the frontal hip bones off the front thigh bones. And more stacking the spine in the back body plane. Have three more deep long breaths. And inhale, rise. Huh. Why is it always hard? Um, we'll take the cans or the blocks to the back of the mat if you have them. Take the feet wide. So we're literally, we're drawing the abdomen back. And it's not about like sucking in your gut as much as it's about literally stacking the spine, right? So we're looking for that in all the poses. With the arms out, turn the left toes in slightly. <sighs> turn the right foot out all the way. Take a deep bend in your front knee so it comes right over your front ankle. The knee has to drop back. Again, we don't want to let the knee fall inward. That strains the inner knee. We need to find this balance and evenness in the pelvis. So as we press that front knee back, we inner rotate the back thigh a little bit and we press the back thigh back at the same time. So the tailbone can settle right between the sits bones. From that grounding, inhale, lift and spread your toes. Lift your abdomen and your frontal hip bones. As you exhale, extend through the feet, the hands, the crown of the head. Have three more deep long breaths. Good. Inhale, straighten that leg. Exhale, widening the back hip back as you reach the fingertips forward. Pressing through the four corners of the feet to hug the muscles to the bone. Already, the abdomen is back. We're not coming down like this, right? We're, we're stacking everything in the side body plane as we come down. You can bring your hand to the block, the shin, or the floor. But then scan the body from the ground up to feel what's going on. 
Notice if you have any pinching in the low back. That usually means that we have to take our thigh bones back, press this front thigh bone towards the back thigh bone, then root down and draw the abdomen back. Just like we did when we were laying on our back, we turn the abdomen from the right to the left to create the balance and evenness. Have three more breaths. And with an inhale, rise. Again, combining shapes, sort of. Bringing the elbow onto the knee or the hand to the floor on the block or behind your foot. Looking behind you, you want to see that you have the hip, the knee, and the ankle all in the same horizontal plane. Pressing from the tailbone out through the back heel. And from the back heel, inhale, reach the arm over the ear. Again, you're looking to create one line of energy through the whole body. Notice if your front butt cheek is sticking way out and you're crunching into your lower back on that side, right? You have to pull the buttocks in to the midline to open the hips in the side body plane. As you inhale, drawing the legs towards each other, drawing the abdomen back. As you exhale, turning it back to the left. Three breaths. And then with an inhale, rise. Turn the toes to face forward. Turn the left foot, the right foot in slightly and the left foot out all the way. Arms wide. Deep bend in the front knee. Stacking that knee right over the front ankle. The knee draws back. And the back hip, it turns in slightly and then also presses back. Pressing the legs back opens the hips fully in the side body plane, so the tailbone roots down. Oftentimes, we have the tendency to let our hips come forward and our chest go forward, right? So we're rooting the tailbone down. We're leaning into the back body. From the base of the pose, inhale, lift and spread the toes. Lift the abdomen, and exhale, extend. Have three more breaths. Softening the shoulders down the back. And inhale, straighten your legs. So you can look at your legs here, make sure you don't sink into your joint. If that's a thing that you do, bend your knees slightly. Press from the back of the knees towards the heels. Lift from the back of the knees towards the sits bones. As we come down, the abdomen stays drawn back. The back inner thigh widens out as we reach the fingertips forward. The pelvis has to shift so the side body stays long. Put your hand to that block, your shin, or the floor. And then again, scan the body from the ground up. So we often, we're sticking our front butt cheek out and we're crunching into the lower back. So we have to root that front thigh bone back and pull the buttocks into the midline to lengthen that side of the lower back, just like we did laying on our backs. Pressing through the heels, inhale, pull the abdomen back and turn it back to the right. Have three more breaths. Allowing all of these cues to be invitations that entice you to explore your body and discover what works for you and what makes ease and space and freedom in the body. With your next inhale, rise. Exhale, ugh. Deep bend in the knee, you can bring the elbow onto the knee. Again, stacking the bones and joints all the way up. Or you can bring your hand to your block or the floor behind your leg. Gazing behind you, you want to make sure that front hip isn't going forward because that's not going to be good for your back, right? We're pressing the back thigh bone back, pressing from the tailbone down through the heel. And then from that heel, inhale, reach the arm over the ear and create one long line of energy through your body. Notice if your front butt cheek is sticking out and crunching your lower back and draw it into the middle and root it back towards the back heel. Inhale, lift and spread the toes. Draw the abdomen back and as you exhale, turn it back to the right. 
have three breaths. And inhale, rise. Straighten the leg, turn the feet, step or jump the feet together. Good. And come to face forward. So we're going to add, um, or we're, we're going to do some twisting. And if you're by a wall, you can actually put your left hip at the wall. And it'll give you a lot of information about what's happening in the body while we twist. First, we're going to do pyramid pose, flexible tanasana. So you can take the blocks outside your feet if you have them. You can take your hands on your hips and step your left leg back. So long stance here, but we want the hips facing forward. So we have to pull the legs towards each other, inner rotate the back thigh, bring that left hip in line with the right. Lift and spread your toes, hug your inner thighs together, lift your abdomen. As you exhale, root the tailbone down, press the thigh bones back. Keep the abdomen towards the spine as you fold so we're not coming down through this. You can bring your hands to the floor or blocks, or you can interlace the hands behind the back if you want more of a challenge. You can look at your legs here though, so see what is happening in the hips. If the hips are out of whack, it becomes nearly impossible to lengthen the side bodies evenly. So pressing the thigh bones back, root the tailbone down, Inhale, lift the abdomen, lengthen the spine, and exhale, fold more deeply for three more deep bone breaths. Good, again, inhale, lengthen the spine. Keep your left hand grounded. If you wanna challenge yourself more, you can take the left hand to the outside of the right foot. And we're gonna bring the right hand onto the sacrum, that triangular bone at the base of the spine. So the sacrum should be flat, parallel to the earth. If it's tilted down, you gotta take your thigh bones back more. And it should be balanced from side to side. Since we're twisting, we're gonna widen the left inner thigh to the left. If you're at the wall, it's even better because you could press the left hip into the wall and then lift the right arm up. Press out through the hands to roll the shoulders back. Keep the abdomen drawn towards the spine. Have three more deep long breaths. And exhale, release. Inhale, step your back foot forward. Exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, reach your arms up and overhead. Exhale, release the arms down by your sides. Good. Taking the hands on the hips, step the right leg back. Again, we wanna have a pretty long stance, but we wanna hug the legs energetically towards each other so that back thigh rotates in, bringing the right hip around in line with the left. As you inhale, Lift and spread your toes. Hug the inner thighs together. Lift the abdomen. As you exhale, root the tailbone down. Press the thigh bones back. Begin to hinge at the hips as you fold forward. Feeling free to interlace the hands behind you if you want more of a challenge, or to bring them down to blocks or the floor. Taking a moment to look at what's happening in your hips and asking your body what adjustments you can make to create balance and evenness in the grounding of the pelvis. Often it helps to press both thigh bones back, then root down. Inhale, lift the abdomen and the frontal hip bones. Exhale, fold more deeply for three breaths. And then we'll add that twist. So keeping the right, inhale, lengthen the spine, gaze forward. Right hand stays grounded inside or outside the left foot. Bringing the left hand onto the hip. Notice if that left hip is going forward and out 
and root it back. Widen the right hip to the right. Inhale, lift the abdomen towards the spine and lift the left arm up for a twist. Press through the hands to roll the shoulders into the spine. Have three breaths. And with an exhale, release. Inhale, step the back foot forward. Exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, reach the arms up and overhead, come to stand. Exhale, release the arms down by your sides. Good. So before we wind down, we're going to do one more little balancing pose. We're going to do warrior three. So we're going to shift the weight onto the right foot. We'll start with the hands at the heart. And with an inhale, spread the toes wide on the right foot, crown down through the four corners, and inhale, lift the left knee. Keep the abdomen drawn back towards the spine. As you exhale, pressing that left heel back behind you as you lower the chest. Press out through both heels and root that standing leg thigh bone back. Lift the abdomen and the frontal hip bones. If you want a challenge, you can stretch the arms forward. Three breaths, inhale, exhale one. Inhale, exhale two. One more big breath in and out, and then inhale, rise, bring that knee back into the chest. Ugh. And release. Shake out that foot if you need to. Releasing that tension, building those muscles. And then with the hands at the heart, shift your weight to the left foot. Spread the toes wide and ground them down. Lift the right knee, and you might notice that when you lift your right knee, your hips want to go forward. So you've got to take the hips back. Take the abdomen back. As you exhale, pressing out firmly through both heels, finding that balance and evenness in the pelvis. Root that left thigh bone back. Lift the abdomen and the frontal hip bones up. Maybe stretch the arms forward. Three breaths, inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three, good. Inhale, rise. And exhale, release. Shake it out. Inhale, reach the arms up. And exhale, fold forward, hinging at the hips. If you need to bend the knees to touch the floor, you always can. Inhale, gaze forward, lengthen. Exhale, ground the palms and step back to downward dog or to child's pose. Your choice. Just pausing for a moment, taking a few breaths. Wherever you're at, just seeing what time it is. Ah, we're running out of time. Okay. We're almost out of time. So let's just come to lay down on our backs again. Bend the knees and ground the feet in close to the buttocks. Palms face up at the sides of the body. Press the back of the head and the shoulders into the mat. With an inhale, lift the pelvis, the low back, the middle back. You can interlace your hands beneath the back, or you can just roll the palms to face up to roll the shoulders under. This pose, although it works the back of the core, the focal point of it is the heart. So from the heart, we lift the back of the heart away from the upper arms. We extend from the heart out through the knees and from the heart out through the crown of the head. Have three more deep long breaths. And then lower the hips. With the feet as wide as the mat, let the knees drop to the right. So the left knee comes towards the bottom of the right foot. Allow the legs to be heavy. 
Breathe length and space into the spine. Inhale back to center and exhale. Take the legs up and over to the other side. Again, allowing the low body to ground you. And as you inhale, reaching the crown of the head and the fingertips away from the pelvic bowl. Good, inhale back to center, draw the knees into the chest. Gently rock from side to side, massage the low back. With an exhale, take the knees to the right, this time they're stacked on top of each other. And if this doesn't feel good, if you ever feel sharp pain in your back while you're twisting, that is your body telling you to back off, to come out of it, to make adjustments. Sometimes it feels good to put a pillow or a blanket between your knees to keep the space, the width of the pelvis. As you inhale, find that length and space in the spine. And as you exhale, soften that left shoulder towards the floor. Good, inhale to center. And exhale the knees up and over to the left side. Again, each inhale breathes length and space into the spine. And with each exhale, you are softening more deeply into the back body plane, wringing out the habits and patterns that aren't serving you, making space to connect more deeply to your passion, your purpose, your gifts, to the ways in which you can contribute and collaborate to create communities that work, baby. <sighs> With your next inhale, return to center. Draw the knees into the chest. Tighten up the muscles in the feet, the legs, the arms, the face, the hands, the hug the nose to the knees. Squeeze yourself into a tight little ball with an inhale, and as you exhale, <sighs> relax, release, and open for Shavasana. Final relaxation. Again, if you ever have low pain in the back, you can bend the knees, take the feet wide, and let the knees fall in towards each other. Or place, ow, a bolster or a block under your knees to support the low back. With the palms facing up at like a 30 degree angle from the body, return your awareness to the breath. Trace the breath again as you inhale down, expanding with the diaphragm into the bottoms of the feet and the tips of the toes. And as you exhale, allow the abdomen to soften, the whole back body to spread wide across the floor. Continue to breathe deeply into the bottoms of the feet and the tips of the toes. And as you exhale completely, <sighs> release any residual tension, negativity, anxiety from the body with the breath through the fingertips. So through this practice, we empty out. We let go of all of the judgments, expectations, limitations, projections we've picked up from our families, our society, the culture and the world around us. And we reconnect with the essence of ourselves. Please lay here for a few more minutes since it has already been an hour. I'm gonna get off. I hope you are using and enjoying these videos and please feel free to give me any feedback that you want about uh, how they could be better. Thank you.